from the Alex Trebek stage at Sony Picture Studios, this is Inside Jeopardy! Hello and welcome back to Inside Jeopardy, your exclusive and official podcast destination for all things happening in the world of Jeopardy. I'm Sarah Foss, and I'm joined today by Buzzy Cohen. Well, it, it is mid-July, so you know I what can't that means. It. You know what that means. What I'm wearing, does it mean? It means I'm wearing my suit and flip-flops. This is the buzzy uh, okay. summer look. I mean, a suit says nothing about the season, but flip-flops. Yes, exactly. That's the sign of summer. Now I understand. Yeah, you got it. Crazy to think we're just two weeks away from you know, the beginning of the conclusion of season 39. <laughs> of course, we will have six weeks of fabulous reruns, but our new episodes will come to an end. So again, nobody be worrying that you're not going to have enough Jeopardy to consume because not only will we have our summer reruns where you're going to get to see Second Chance, you're going to get to see that epic TOC. If you've forgotten it, you're going to remember it. Yeah. Six games that final went with Amy coming ahead as the champion when it was all said and done. But in addition to that, ABC is going to rerun Masters starting on July 25th, starting next week, every Tuesday, at 9 p.m., you sit back, you enjoy Masters one more time. I've watched Masters so many times between, <laughs> you know, being there for the taping, being there in editing, and then, of course, just wanting to watch along with everyone at home. And I have to say, it just gets better. Yeah. So lots to see. We talked about Amy Schneider, our TOC champion. She's going to be joining us here in the pod a little later on. So. What a time to be alive, you know. Oh so my much goodness. Jeopardy. What and a time to be alive in a Jeopardy fan. There's even Pluto TV. Yes. Where you can get old classic episodes. Think about the amount of Jeopardy you can consume in a day now compared and to... in your car. You can yeah. do tune-in. You can listen you to radio versions You also have two Jeopardy. Jeopardy podcasts. I and mean, we can't get enough of Buzzy Cohen. You know what? I'm just going to own that and say thank you. I'm very Good happy you, to be Buzzy. beloved. Good for you. Well, in the world of Jeopardy <laughs> comes highlights. Let's take a look at last week's games. Cue the beep boops. <laughs> We started out the week with Alex Gordon going for his third win against challengers Deliri Johnson and James Tyler. Alex was in the driver's seat the entire game up until he found the last daily double on the 55th clue of the game. He wagered nearly everything and was incorrect, effectively eliminating himself from competition and allowing James to get the win despite not being able to get final correct. Oh, Buzzy, this one hurt. Yeah, well, this was a tricky situation to wager from. On one hand, there are only five clues left. You're not going to be able to make that up. On the other hand, you do not have that runaway game that you're used to. And with that wager, you could put this away. If you look at his stats, this is the first daily double that Alex has missed. And I think it makes sense to wager on yourself. But I have learned the hard way that later in the game might be a time to pull it back a little bit. But Alex, well played, gutsy play. We're going to see Alex again in the Champions Wild Card. Excited for him to come back. Uh, Dr. Gordon, perhaps, at that I point. Know. And I think that's, you know, why this one hurts so badly. Yeah. Because, of course, you know, I think he saw the category stitch incoming. Mm -hmm. He knows he's just graduated med school. He's feeling pretty confident. And as you had said, he'd had a really great run on the daily doubles. And I just think no one can judge what you would do in that moment. Time is moving so fast. You're just feeling like you're kind of in the zone. You've been doing really well. You know, you've got two games under your belt. And so I just, I don't want anyone to think that you know what you would have done in his shoes. So James ends up being our champion. He had spoken in the interview about being a cancer survivor. A lot of applause, you know, when he announced that. He had also talked about that four months after his diagnosis, he met the love of his life. So Ken says, all right, you met the love of your life. You've beat cancer. You're a Jeopardy champion. And James joked, yeah, I should probably just call it quits now. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's time for like Mount Everest or something. I know? don't know. Well, what we do know is he'll be back the on The indomitable Tuesday. spirit uh, of James Tyler. Well, on Tuesday, James was back to face off against Justin White and Aaron Sheedy. It was a close game throughout both of the Jeopardy and Double Jeopardy rounds, but James was able to take a good lead heading into final despite not being able to find any of the daily doubles. In the final Jeopardy round, Justin was the only player to come up with the correct response. 
and he gets the win in come from behind fashion. I want to give a shout out to Aaron, who was a lot of fun to watch. Loved watching Aaron. The two-handed cheer. I think I did one of those once on the stage. But when I, Aaron got it correct, when she, she did the two-handed right. cheer. Yeah, I and love that. I think I'd be doing that if I got a daily double. So, so I love good, it. Good for you. In the post-game chat, Aaron actually said, I had so much fun. Everyone backstage knew I was here for the fun, and it definitely delivered. Playing Jeopardy is fun. Right. <laughs> but I love when our contestants, despite not winning, yeah. that you're still able to be in the moment and know you're a Jeopardy contestant. You made it. So many people have this dream for so many years and aren't able to make it to the Alex Trebek stage. So yeah. the fact that in that moment, Aaron was like, this delivered on the fun. Olympic teams was the final Jeopardy category. Mm -hmm. And Justin did get it correct. And then Ken, you know, he recalled that in his first game, mm -hmm. his final Jeopardy was about the Olympics. And I remember Ken saying, like, huge Olympics fan, no problem. He was in the middle podium, just, <laughs> just like, like Justin. Justin. And he said, would you like to go on and win 73 more games? And Justin said, I would like to do that very much. Well, it's up to you, Justin. Let's see how things fare for you in Wednesday's game. goes facing off against Itai Sofer and Mia McGill. Low scoring game this one was. No mm. player above 7,000 after the double jeopardy round. Itai had a small lead which proved to be vital when all three players came up with the correct response in final. Now this is interesting because you know we have our jeopardy air time mm -hmm. our jeopardy production time. This was a busy week. We had ended up having to tape the last games of Masters on the Monday of this week. And then we went into production the entire rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday with these yep. remaining shows. So we're stopped down during a commercial break and Ken accidentally called Justin James. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think I have PTSD from Masters. And Justin joked, I am not a villain. And then Ken did it a second time. Huge laughs from the audience. And Ken said, if I say his name three times, he has to replace you. It's like Beetlejuice. Yes. Well, maybe <laughs> after hearing that, James, the next time when he comes back for Masters to defend his title, he yes. will get on stage and say, it's showtime. I love it. Like Beetlejuice. That love would that be movie. great. Yeah. And another sweet moment that happened in the post-game chat, Itai said, hey, Ken, like, tell me about your Jeopardy journey. How did you get on Jeopardy? And Ken, you know, was kind of like, oh, I, I auditioned and then I waited for like a year. And basically Ken was saying, I got on the first time I auditioned. Mm -hmm. And then he backtracked because Itai was like, well, how many times did you try? And he's like, well, I did get on the first time. But he said, really, just getting on the show is yes. the win. You make it on the stage. Overachieving. You go on yes. to win nine games like Buzzy Cohen in a TOC. Woo! Mind blown. Another just compliment I will take. Just I'm just take basking in. in it as Itai is also basking in being a Jeopardy champion heading into our Thursday show. Yes, going up against Kathy Barkey and Dennis Lung. Dennis had a great start, scoring nearly $10,000 in the Jeopardy round alone, but Itai was able to weather the storm, clawing his way back to within $300 of Dennis heading into final. Dennis was the only player to get final wrong, mm. allowing Itai another come from behind win. I got to hand it to Itai. Sometimes when you have a rough Jeopardy round, mm -hmm. you can kind of get in your head about it. He really used it as a way to focus, and it shows uh, with his buzzer percentage going up six percentage points. And those extra buzzes that he got in on, he also was really able to capitalize on them. Even if he missed that first daily double, that second daily double brought him back into it. And of course... You know, getting final right really helps you win this game. Dennis, when he did find that first daily double, he <laughs> said, my son would make fun of me if I didn't. True daily double. Good and for put you, it all Dennis. out there. And he was correct. So his son will be proud. Dennis feeling good. And then Itai on his last clue, he said, bring it. So the yes. buttery effect is still paying off. Sam will be a part of our Jeopardy lore forever. Yes. And now a quick word from our sponsor. That's the sound of another sale on Shopify, and the moment another business dream becomes a reality. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel. Whether you're selling satin sheets from Shopify's in-person POS system or offering organic olive oil on Shopify's all-in-one e-commerce platform, you're covered. 
And once you've reached your audience, Shopify has the internet's best converting checkout to help you turn them from browsers to buyers. One of the things I really love about Shopify is that no matter how much you wanna grow or how fast you wanna grow, Shopify is ready with the tools you need for every level. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US, and Shopify is truly a global force, powering Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklyn, and, and millions of entrepreneurs of every size across over 170 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every single step of the way. This is a possibility powered by Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash jeopardy, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash jeopardy to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash jeopardy. Travel plans for summer? Learn to speak like a local with Babbel. Because with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in just three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real life situations and delivered with conversation based teaching. With Babbel, you can learn everything you need to have real world conversations from vocab words to culture. And all it takes is 10 minutes a day. Babbel is helping millions of people quickly and confidently have real world conversations in a new language. I'm so thankful that I had Babbel to help me get confident before my family trip to France. And now I can be the tour guide. Here is a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash inside J. Get 55% off babbel.com slash inside J spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash inside J. Rules and restrictions may apply. Now back to Inside Jeopardy. Well, we finished off the week with Etai going for a third win up against Daniel Moore and Allison Madsen. Daniel started off in the negative, but wow, he caught fire, ending the round with 17 correct responses and $9,200 from being in the red. He added another 13 correct responses, two daily doubles in double jeopardy, ends the round with $29,000 and a runaway against two very strong competitors. Yeah, I got to say, I'm not surprised, you know, when you see an aggressive player Sometimes they do start out the game a little bit in the red because they know there's a lot of money on the board. There's a lot of money in double jeopardy. So you're going to play aggressively and go for that stuff and try to just get in and assert dominance, work on your buzzer timing. Daniel is clearly that kind of player, and it really paid off for him. The correct response rate, 94% in jeopardy, 93% in double jeopardy. Those are big, big numbers to put up and you know we we've said you've got to be about 85 or higher mm -hmm. to be a, a champion to be up in that level in both rounds even after starting out in the red really really impressive um, excited to see more from daniel can ask daniel with 30 correct responses what are your qualifications you know how did you get so good and daniel said we love to hear this yep. he's been watching jeopardy with his grandparents and his parents his entire life We've said it so many times. There's no better way to prepare for this show than to watch this show. Absolutely. And love to see that that's how Daniel came away with a huge victory. All right. Well, that's all for our game highlights of the week. And instead of viewer questions, we are once again going to dive into our interview questions. So let's welcome her back reigning TOC champion, Amy Schneider. Amy Schneider, welcome to the Inside Jeopardy podcast <laughs> studio. Hi, thanks for having me. You know, we did the math. It was two months ago today that you last appeared on the Alex Trebek stage. I know everyone's wondering, what have you been up to for the past couple months? Uh, well, I have uh, still been uh, finishing another couple of rounds of revisions on my book. That's kind of been my main priority. Uh, and then it's been June, so it's been Pride. I've had a bunch of stuff around that and just uh, spent the weekend kind of uh, partying in San Francisco with people. <laughs> What's it like to be Amy Schneider in Pride Month? It's pretty neat. People are very excited to see me out there. I had more than one yes. person be like, oh, wow, and here you are, just like a, a normal person out celebrating with us. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm, I'm still a normal person. Uh, you know, I still just want to kind of go out and drink in Dolores Park and, and have a good time. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully all the revelry of Pride wasn't dampened, but we are all very excited about your book in the form of a question, The Joys and Rewards of a Curious Life, which is coming out on October 3rd. I know we've talked a little bit about the book and, and how it's kind of 
connecting your story, connecting with your experiences on Jeopardy. How are you feeling about putting this out in the world finally? Uh, I'm feeling good. I finished the first draft uh, a few months ago, and so it's been long enough that I've stopped like uh, hating it, hating the book, and feeling like it's terrible. I, I, you know, I've gotten some distance from it, and, and I, I feel pretty proud of it. You know, it's something that I, I really enjoyed the process of writing it as much as I also hated it. I think that this is anybody <laughs> who's been a writer has knows this sort of feeling of like being miserable the whole time. And then when you're done being like, man, I'm so excited to write the next book. That's kind of where I'm at. Like, that's my goal is that I'm hoping this does well enough that that people want to read another one from me because I'm already like looking at it being like, I, I could finish out this story or here's something I should have gotten in that I didn't and all of that sort of thing. Mm. You know, we've gotten a bit of insight into the book. And I think listeners will want to know that this is not all the the light and fluffy Amy <laughs> Schneider stories, right? You're telling life stories, different experiences, and really kind of being honest about your whole journey. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that there was there were basically two motivations I had. And, and the first one just sort of came out of the, the question that everybody asks me these days is like, how do you know all that stuff? How did you get so smart? And all that sort of thing. <laughs> And reflecting on that and realizing that it was just about, you know, sort of living, as it says, a curious life, just being interested in learning for its own sake. And that the Jeopardy success that I've gotten out of that, while wonderful and amazing, is is far from the only or, or even the most important things that that openness to learning has gotten me. So that, that was kind of what I started out with. But then as I was writing it, you know, something else that, that I was sort of realizing was... Um, you know, my being on Jeopardy meant a lot to a lot of people in in the trans community in particular, and I'm I'm very grateful for that and and conscious of that. But you know, I also had this feeling of what people saw of me on Jeopardy is a small part of me and kind of the most relatable, family friendly, approachable part <laughs> of me. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's what Jeopardy is all about. Jeopardy is not the place for my my dark past or anything like that. <laughs> but at the same time, I worried that seeing just the good in my life and seeing just the parts that are easiest to connect to might give people the impression that when they come across other trans people out in the world who are, are less approachable, who have more messiness in their life, that I could be used as an excuse to write other trans people off. And so I wanted to mm. talk about the fact that I have had messiness in my life. I have, like many trans people, I have done things with drug use and I've had a checkered sexual history and all these sorts of things. And I wanted to show that none of that is incompatible with the Jeopardy champion that you've seen. And so none of that is a reason to write anybody off. I love that. You know, I remember back to when we did a promo what does a Jeopardy champion look like? And we showed so many different champions, but the message was, it looks like you. And I think for the first time when you came on the show and played, more people were able to believe that. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what that's like for you to know that you've had that impact, not only on just people watching, but people who now say, you know what? I can do this too, whether it's Jeopardy or something else, that you yeah. made that possible for people. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I'm in incredibly grateful for. And it's a thing that... I didn't realize how important representation was, and I didn't know how true it was that you need to see somebody like you in a given position, whether it's Jeopardy Champion, whether it's anything else, that seeing somebody like you in that position can make you believe that you can do it. I wouldn't have said that I didn't believe that I could be on Jeopardy, and yet until I saw other trans people on Jeopardy, I kind of didn't, even though like intellectually, if you had asked me, I would have said, oh, sure, you know, anybody should be and could be on Jeopardy. But nonetheless, until I had seen somebody, there was some part of me that didn't believe it. I'm glad to be in places that people haven't seen someone like me before, because there's there's no reason they shouldn't believe that they could do anything that I've done. Well, and you told so many stories about, you know, grandparents reaching out to you. And I think that's what was most impactful to me is people came in with unconscious bias about various things mm -hmm. and you changed people's minds. And to have that impact on, let's say it's a grandparent, who doesn't mm -hmm. matter, but that they could have their interpretation of what trans looked like or what that represents and that you were able to change people's minds just by being you, <laughs> being on a quiz show and kicking ass. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, and it's it's something you know I've talked about it, but I had the realization that like it's no surprise that people have these negative ideas about trans people because that's all that there was in society. You know, when I was growing up, I was raised with the mm -hmm. same stereotypes about trans people, and so of course a lot of people are you know suspicious and and have these negative ideas because that's all that anybody was taught for so long in our history and so mm -hmm. so many people all they needed was to just have somebody like i just sort of envisioned shaking them a little bit like being like hey pay attention <laughs> reconsider the the prejudices that you were raised with we're coming up on two years since you mm -hmm. first taped and i know you have talked a lot about all the ways that your life has changed and not changed. Uh, mm -hmm. Getting married, winning a little bit of money on Jeopardy changes things. <laughs> well, you know, becoming, becoming a, a writer. Jeopardy millionaire. <laughs> um, I'm interested to know, like, I think it could be interesting for people to hear maybe if there's something that you miss from September 27th, 2021, before you were Amy Schneider, mm -hmm. Jeopardy champion. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that. I mean, just, you know, in the example of, of being out and about for Pride this weekend and not feeling like I could just sort of blend into the crowd in the same way. You know, it's something that, like, overall, I'll, I'll take the trade off and I'm happy with it. But there was yeah. there there was something there that I, I have lost a little bit. Honestly, actually, I'll tell you what it is that I miss is that I miss having a boss. I don't miss my old job. <laughs> I miss having a manager that gave me like status reports and like I would tell me how I was doing because since yeah. I've been running my own career in a way it's kind of a uh, it's kind of like frightening at times like I, I don't know how well sure. I'm doing and nobody will tell me so that's probably the biggest thing that I miss actually mm. now you know you're coming back obviously for the Jeopardy Invitational Tournament the too <laughs> legit to quit as we like to call it around here <laughs> It's going to be a while before we record that, but in the back of your mind, you know you will be back on the Alex Trebek stage. And yeah. you talked about at Masters that your schedule had been so busy since becoming a 40-game champion and the TOC <laughs> winner that you really hadn't had much time to, to study or prepare. What's it looking like now for the year ahead and how you might approach coming back for the JIT? I mean, I think that over the summer, I don't have a ton going on for the first time in, you know, almost two years. <laughs> so yeah. partly I'm going to take that time to relax and maybe take an actual well vacation and things like that. <laughs> I feel like most of the studying that I do for Jeopardy, I just sort of do in my daily life without like noticing that I'm doing it. And so I just need to sort of make sure I've I've blocked out some time as the next taping dates come up to actually go through and, and sort of fill in those gaps, go through my list of vice presidents and best picture winners and all those sorts <laughs> of things and do that that last little bit on top. But, you know, day to day, I just want to keep learning and that's all I really need to worry about. Well, I know Masters, you know, maybe the outcome wasn't what you had hoped for, uh -huh. but I think the outcome we also enjoyed was the relationship among you and your five other competitors. You know, you even said on Twitter, like James Holtzauer, he's actually a pretty nice guy. <laughs> Talk about those different relationships. You know, James was the one person I didn't know very well going into it or hadn't competed with. So he was sort of the, the kind of unknown to me because I knew the other four, I already knew were, you know, wonderful people to, to hang out with. It was just such a nice sort of vibe, if you will, coming in with all of us. None of us had anything to prove you know, in terms of Jeopardy, like we all knew that we were champions and whatever happened in the Jeopardy Masters wasn't going to change that. And we could all just enjoy each other's company and, and support each other through whatever was going on in our lives and just hang out. The The last taping day was after I'd been eliminated. And so, you know, I didn't have to be there, but I just was like, you know what? No, I can't. You flew down. I flew down. I was like, I cannot miss it. I can't miss the chance to, to root everybody on. Yeah. I think on social media, people loved seeing you yeah. and Andrew and Sam in the front row, you know, cheering <laughs> on your friends in the competition. Yeah. Speaking of Jeopardy and taping, I have to ask, because this is, I've taken on the mantle of finding oh, out. Oh, yes. Very Amy, important questions here. What is your Jeopardy lunch order? Wow, yeah. I'll tell you what, I start by, by seeing what the like chef's special is. As do I, Amy, as do I. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it also like, it depends. If I'm competing in the afternoon, that's one thing. If I'm not, then I'll get like pizza right. or something. Um, <laughs> sure. You know, like enjoy that. But yeah, whenever I've gotten the chef special, I have not regretted it. Do you remember a particularly 
Positive Chefs special. You've had or, so many. Yeah. Over your <laughs> yes. M- well, I mean, long and storied career. Well, keep in mind, for most of the, my career, I did not have that extensive of a choice for oh, my yes, lunch. Oh yes, we were eating in the parking garage, <laughs> oh, and our right. lunches right. were packed in little plastic choices. You I had a choice of two. That as well, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, but uh, no, I remember a, uh, it was like a Korean pork almost stir fry type mm-hmm. of thing that was just yeah, really good sticky rice yeah, yeah yeah that was a good one <laughs> <laughs> i remember it too yeah yeah next up buzzy yes we all know your amazing statistics so many games won all your money winnings what is a stat that might not be at the top of that leaderboard of legends or maybe it is what is the stat you are most proud of the thing that i'm the most proud of is the Tournament of Champions win, which is, you know, I, mm. if you call that a statistic, but that was yeah. <laughs> one of the greatest Tournament of Champion fields ever. I came in, you know, sort of as the number one seed with a, a lot of pressure on me in that sense. Yeah. I had to go up against Andrew yet again, knowing how <laughs> how tough he was to go up against. And being able to stay mentally sort of strong through all of that is just yeah. probably the thing I'm most proud of out of everything I've, I've done on, on that stage. What would you say, looking back over the past couple of years, what has been the best part of this experience? I mean, I think that, you know, the best part has been hearing from people who I've made a difference in their lives. I, I've talked about it a lot, but it, it remains true that that's definitely the most meaningful part of it. But I think if I was to say something else, it would be, as much as I just complained about it earlier, the chance to be focusing on what I want to do in my life and not what do I need to do to stay employed and to keep my health insurance and keep making rent and everything like that. Mm. You know, so few of us in America have that freedom to follow their passion and not just follow a paycheck. And so having the chance to do that is just something that I'm incredibly grateful for. Now, as you look ahead to the JIT, obviously you've already faced some of the best champions in Jeopardy history. A lot of names being thrown around. Anyone you're hoping to maybe go up against just to meet them or really just to see how you fare against them? them. Yes. Meet them or beat them. Who do you want to be? (laughs) Oh, wow. I don't know. It's one of these things where it's like, I don't don't really want to go up against anyone that I could name. It's it's all so (laughs) hard. (laughs) In terms of people that have been recent, I, I don't know exactly who's eligible and all these sorts of things, but I talked a lot with uh, Hannah Wilson and was so happy to see her. And we just really uh, connected well and was somebody that of, of all the people that I've rooted on the most in the past uh, year or two, like she's the one. Well, and she could win the TOC. So if right. that was true, you know, you'd have to make it all the way to Masters to meet up with Hannah. Uh-huh. She may not be in the JIT, but she could, could be... That could be a good motivator. That could, could be, a, be big a good motivator. motivator. Oh, I'm pretty motivated, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't happen to be trying to wrench another championship belt out of James Holzhauer's hands that's motivating you, is it? I mean, it, that that would be nice. That would be nice. <laughs> Well, even when I talked to Hannah right after her run came to an end, she talked about you. And we hadn't talked about on the show that she Mm -hmm. was trans. We really let her journey be her journey. And I just said, you know, what inspired you to want to try out for Jeopardy? She said Amy Schneider. And I just thought that we have another great champion on the heels of you and really because of you. How lucky Mm -hmm. is the show? And really just thank you, Amy. We are so lucky. As I say, we don't get to choose our ambassadors. We don't know who's going to mm-hmm. come on this show and be great, but you are certainly one of them. And we couldn't be more proud. And yeah. we're so excited to see you back on the Alex Trebek stage. And I'm just a huge fan. I'm a fan <laughs> first, you. as you know, Amy. Thank you. And a it, huge fan. And I want to say thanks to you as well. That, you know, Like you say, you can't choose your ambassadors, but you did the work to make yourself a place that is open to everyone. People hadn't seen somebody like themselves on the on the Alex Trebek stage before, but you were ready to welcome them whenever they showed up. And so credit to everyone at Jeopardy for that. Well, we wish you a good summer. Enjoy a little downtime. Yeah. It is yeah. well-deserved. And uh, we know you'll get your trivia in just because you are so curious about life. And we can't wait for the book in October as well. Yeah, looking yeah. forward to a lot of social media posts of you with a drink that has an umbrella in it. <laughs> yes. All right, I'll, I'll make, make sure, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for Thanks, joining Amy. us, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Take care. Yeah, thank you. 
Every time we talk to Amy, I always learn something new and amazing. She's really just an incredible person. So we're lucky to have her, as we said, in our Jeopardy family. Yes, watching her Jeopardy journey continue to unfold. Yes. I love having a front row seat for that one. All right, that's it for today's show. Listener, thank you for joining us, as always. Only one. Yes. Only one listener. To our one listener, <laughs> my mom, Amy Cohen, thank you for joining us. As always, we'll be back next week with more gameplay highlights, and we'll be chatting with Jeopardy Master, Andrew the Dark Horse He. Oh, I can't wait. Is he getting sleep yet as a new father? <laughs> we are looking forward to that interview. As always, subscribe to the podcast, rate us, leave us a comment, share across social, and follow us at Jeopardy on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on TikTok. And send us your questions and comments to Inside Jeopardy Podcast at gmail.com. We'll see y'all next week. Ken, what's that thing the kids say? You mean smash the like, subscribe, and bell button so you'll be the first to know when we upload more great videos? Yeah, that's it. Do that. <laughs>